Greetings, this is Celestine Starr, and I'm here to speak to you today about the world events. From my perspective, and my love, and my heart, and to share some grandmother wisdom to all of you in the world. I'm going to speak from a place of my life and my reflections upon what is happening in the world today, what I went through during the times of coming to America as a 16-year-old somewhat immigrant, even though I was American, and I came to, to America from England, uh, there was not an easy way to enter because it was a time when if you were slightly different, you spoke different, you were Jamaican, Haitian, English, uh, Afro-American, you, you were not necessarily accepted by those who lived in America and who were raised there through the times of slavery and the heartache and struggle that they experienced. So I want to begin this talk, this sharing with you, with a prayer to the ancestors. Yenamaye Anurabe Anno Yerabaye Sunna Yerabaye Sunde Hue Yerabayo Yerabayo Mayo Amo Amon and Ebaye Amon and Ejebe Yo Nanunana Nanunanebe Anno Yere se na ba ha, yere ba ho na me he, yere ba yo. Ha ka 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 tu ha ka ka tu be ha no. Yere ba se na me hu, yere ba ka na be ha. Yere ma ha, ha ha ka ha, yere ma, oh mama, that come forth ah, be filled with love and truth, compassion and balance. I ask for guidance in sharing these words with all of you. May you know that I love the human race and I love each and every one of you. We are in a state of awakening. We are coming out of a long slumber and so I want to offer a few gemstones, Omani Padmi Hum, jewels in the center of the lotus, to assist humanity in making the shift. The shift from the confusion, the hatred, and the tensions among the peoples around the world. So I'm going to begin with just letting you know that I am Egyptian, Nubian Egyptian, I am Native American, Croatan, I have Russian blood, Nordic, and uh, the African Bantu uh, nations are within me. These are the ancestors, and each one of you have your ancestors. I believe that most people on the planet are made of mixed blood. And so even those who speak about being superior or being the pure race, it would behoove me to see that most are probably not pure race. There are no pure races on this planet, and certainly there are no superior races on this planet. And I could speak into that because I've walked this planet. I've done 66 times around the sun and I've traveled the world and I've speak, spoken to many people. I've spent years, over 40 years, doing healing work and looking into your eyes 
both as a professional optician, healing, working, helping those to see. And so I think this is a part of my work is to unveil and to open up and to allow for the truth to come forth. Allowing people to see more clearly. And that is what the heavens, all the planetary systems are bringing to us these days with all of the cosmic rays amplifying and shifting the sensitivity of the mind frame within the human race. The solar winds are down and so the cosmic rays come forth and this is what we're feeling, you know, becoming sensitive, more, more intuitive, more open to hearing, more understanding the clarity. And so for me, raised in a highly esoteric family in the ancient days, we learned that each grouping has a key. You know, so if you go to Asia, you learn a lot about energies and mind. And we go to Egypt and you learn about consciousness and elevation and cosmos. So each nation has a key. And I'd like to open the field a little bit for each one to understand that if you shut down that information, you're only getting half, an eighth, a quarter of the totality of creation. And you certainly cannot be superior if you do not understand that or you do not live by that understanding that we live in a created world and the intelligence that is creating this world has created each one of us. And at the age of six, I had the near-death experience. I went through the light and into the Godhead. And believe me, when you get into the light and you go into those places where you have life review, you get to look at everything that you've done, every breath, every time you blink your eyes, your two voices, how you think one way and you tell somebody something else. And so that kind of brought my path very narrow. And I know that each of you and your actions are all being recorded and will be fed back to you upon your leaving your bodies. Take that into consideration now in this time of turmoil, confusion. But yet it is a time of speaking up, of people finally saying it out loud and having conversations and reorganizing themselves. And so with that, the positivity comes because it has to come up. All the underbelly of humanity is coming up today in this moment, in this breath. So, being multiracial is key in understanding. As I said, most people in the world today are mixed, if, if not uh, races, of different tribes. And so, to keep that in mind as we move through the changes, that the word respect, I'm going to put that on the table, the world the word respect, respecting life itself. And understanding the Creator put it there for a reason. Each one of us was birthed into creation. We have a purpose and a function. And it is far beyond anyone on this planet except someone who has been to the illuminated Godhead and back can even begin to speak about judging. And it isn't about superiority or non-superiority or ignorance. It is about the true knowing of creation. So I'm going to take and go a little bit deeper now. I was educated in England. Most of my education was there, although I was born in Michigan, Harrison. Born there and then up to Alaska and down to New Mexico before we went to England. And I tell you, America was gently open and flowing. And 
there was no real racial energy that happened around me. Our lineage, being mostly Egyptian Croatian, just wasn't connected in with the racial uh, connections as we went up to Alaska. Everyone was together, and I never felt any difference within my skin color. And everybody was in oneness and even in awe of the Inuit Native American, the, of the Inuits that were from Alaska. In fact, we treasured their dances and their songs and their stories. I mean, I remember them as a child and just in awe of their art and their offerings. There was a great respect, not only for the land and its people, but the animals and everything there because if you didn't and you were out there in the wilderness you may run into something called your creator and you will see what you are made of that is for sure so being raised in england uh, a most high-born education i was given and i'm very thankful for that and but at the same time as i grew up as a young girl on the streets of London and traveling around a bit in London, we had to be careful because we were considered American. And so that knowledge was ingrained in me. You're American. And even though some of my best friends were ambassadors, daughters to the Zulu tribe, um, the Zulu nation, uh, the Spanish ambassadors, uh, daughters and children, um, were my friends and people from all over the world and it was really about how you carried yourself is how you were seen and considered they did have a caste system they had those of the royals and those of servitude and so I was brought into the world of the royals and I was given the proper way of being and even though our parents were, you could say, upper middle class, perhaps a little bit on the wealthy side, we were still having to bring ourselves to proper stance and proper sit. And if you didn't, you could be considered a lower class. Also the servitude, the servants, and some of them had to pay debts. And so they were cast into servitude. So we understood those things, and there wasn't really the histories of slavery passing through England except for going to America. And there wasn't really slaves everywhere, it was servants. And so I want to just say that that template, the American, uh, the Afro-American plight was not in my blood. And so I came to America at the age of 16. What was interesting about that journey is we thought it was the rock. Everybody called America the rock. I was so plaid. I'm an American. I was so proud. I'm going to America. And then I got here. And what I saw was Watts was burning. The Kent State murders, Vietnam protests. I'm black and I'm proud. And people would say, oh, you're just black. And I say, oh no, excuse me, I'm, I'm a bit cocoa. Sorry about that, you know, you've got the wrong color. I didn't quite understand what was going on, but boy, did I get an education. I got an education so quickly that I was truly amazed that they even would call each other black and be proud. Why would somebody call themselves a black color when there were so many beautiful tones and and ranges of color from the lightest to the darkest blue-black. It was so beautiful. And they had such a rich fabric, the people that I was seeing of color. And even you were black, brown, yellow, or red. And there I was in the middle. I had both a couple of the colors, but no, no, you're black. And I never did get used to that. And I still am not used to that. And an interesting thing that happened in 1965, I came to the United States in right around 1969, 70, 
Lyndon B. Johnson signs this immigration bill, and he did it mainly because the Europeans needed to have status. And so the bill was to assist the American Europeans to have connections to their families in Europe. And so they gave them the name White. And out of that, because I did some research and I'm like, well, how did this even come about? And I know some, some people say the CIA, you know, trying to put the bad label on Afro-Americans or people of color. It was kind of their thing to bring that race down. And so what happened was not only did it assist European Americans in uh, connecting with their families and bringing more into America when they abolished the, um, I think it was the 1920 uh, Immigration Act. It destroyed a whole uh, level of security for people of color coming into the United States and people of color to be here when Lyndon B. Johnson signed that 1965 proclamation. So here we go. Now you have immigrants coming in from Asia and Haiti and Jamaica, and you have these uh, generational slave plantation um, Negroids and mixed mulattoes. And I was considered and seen as a mulatto. I was called high yellow. And there was a lot of jealousy. Uh, I wasn't really accepted because I spoke with a different language. I didn't have a slang. I didn't speak like a Southerner. I chose not to speak like a Southerner because I love the English, proper English language. It was just what I was raised around and what I knew, but I was punished heavily for that. And so there was the pushback from those who were white, most of them, not all of them, but those who were in a state of illusion about themselves. And I was not accepted by the black Americans because they were black Americans and I was not considered an American even. And I know a lot of immigrant Afro uh, people, Jamaican Africans and such, were having a hard time as well. So I want to just take it from there. I want to say a few words about black and white. You know, a child will color a person that they want to color as European American or white with the color flesh. They will not use the white coloring. I mean, I used to teach art for many years, but and and you know, they won't color black, they color brown skin. They kind of look and they see and they try to match what they see. So a child is kind of in a state of reality, but yet we have this label. It's almost like the black box is put over and everybody goes, yes, okay, we accept that. But they don't understand that if you say black, you've taken away the humanness. It's very important to understand that. It's a color, it's abstract. It doesn't have a nation. It doesn't have a nationality. It doesn't have a place on earth. It's not even on earth. It's just an abstract in the fourth dimension. You're not even grounded as a human being on earth when you say, I'm black. Because the connotation of it is, I'm with a, this race of people, but I can't see past the black to see what kind of race they are. It's just doesn't tell me much. And when people call me black, they don't know that I'm Egyptian African. I am closer to Ethiopian. I'm Nubian. I have Bantu, yes. Uh, but I also have the Russian, and I'm very mixed, you know. I have the Croatian. And I've been raised in the traditions where I understand each of those nationalities. It's not like I say I'm Native American and I don't know about it. I actually am a medicine wheel keeper. So I can go all the way into that and say, yes, I can say I am Croatian, I am my nation. And I was raised among the Arapaho and, 
and the Apaches and the Navajo and Hopi. And I enjoy that. I love that, the richness of who I am as a human, my, my ancestors. And so saying you're black kind of takes that all away. And then you have, and I, and I understand and I know that that was one of the ways of controlling the population of slavery and separating the children and the women or whatever and bringing them to Haiti and down in the Dominican Republic and so they would lose their heritage and not know who they were. So I understand about it and I'm here to say and put it on the table that you take the humanity of yourself off the table when you say you are black. And should you choose, that is your way. But just understand, I am not black. I am a human and I have brown skin. And I know my nationality is mixed and that's who I am. And not to feel offended if I choose not to. I was never accepted anyway. So why would I take on something that I was going to be punished for? Why would I take that on? I support each and every human being in the, in the South, each and every human being in America, each and every human being on the planet. I would rather, and I do enjoy understanding your history and your, your lineage and your ancestry. Black doesn't do anything for me, but make me understand that you're an American, Afro-American that was taking on the historical values of the time from the 60s. And here we are, 2020, and it's time to move forward. And everyone's asking for reform and change. And the first step forward is, I am human. So I wanna also say that the European Americans, there are more that were open. I kind of moved towards, we went, I, I stayed in America for some time and went to Washington State and down into California. And, and no, California wasn't forward thinking at that time. Uh, still ran into a lot of troubles and I hung out with the brown people, the, you know, Filipinos, the, the Latinos, and sometimes uh, not too much, but there were some in our school and I knew of them. I didn't really hang with them, but the Filipinos were my clan because they were easygoing, they laughed, they, they saw you as a human, and uh, there wasn't all this um, uh, protest going on. And so uh, it gave me time to study into slavery. And then I was hit so deeply in my heart. When I read about a young boy who was very young, and there in the Deep South, they had chained this boy to a porch. And the people who were caring for him kept him as a dog on the front porch of their house in South Carolina. I remember that very well. And the story opens up with him being nine years old from the time he was young to nine years old. Not one single person went to rescue him. He ate scraps and people walked by. If he didn't eat, he starved. And so that hit me so hard. I understood the suffering from this one boy of the American slaveries. I studied everything as I could all the way back. And I asked the mother, why did this happen? What is going on? And I got the answer was that the, Afro, the Africans allowed the mother, the great mother earth to be raped every day, gold and diamonds, all of her treasures. And not only do they allow this happen, they do not organize themselves, nor can they help themselves in some ways, but to allow this to happen. And during the time, just before the trade, they, there, was a, there was a reconciliation that was coming up. And the groupings that went to America were a part of that reconciliation. To pay with their bodies, to pay with their mind, to pay with their souls for the raping of the mother. And it still continues today. They are a people. Africa is a people that enslaves their people. They have no respect for human life. And the children are made into soldiers. The girls are raped. 
and taken away and used any way they can, and they are out of control. There are, there are still 700,000 slaves in Africa. And you ask yourself, why? And so what I looked at was in order to enslave someone, one has to put a shield in front of them and live in an illusion that it's okay. Somewhere in their makeup, they begin to believe it's okay to sell another person, a 10-year-old boy, a 5-year-old girl, a 12-year-old, and let them do anything to them. And giving another human that much power over another without the intelligence level to handle that is the most dangerous and cruelest effect that I could say is happening on this planet. Trafficking people, trafficking girls, boys, whatever it may be, abuse, slavery, all of these things. And it's up for us now. It's up. We have to look at it and look at it in the eye. And what I saw as I evolved my own consciousness was, and I have asked deeply and I've searched deeply, is there's a grouping of individuals that are casting the ignorance upon humanity. And ignorance is very dangerous because this ignorance has been passed from generation to generation the Europeans, and we're looking at the Portuguese who came down the coastline and they were just taking tusks and all the things that were raped out of the mother, Africa. And they said, what else do you have? And they said, we have people. We have some servants over here. Huh, take them, I'll take some money. And there it went. And now the Portuguese, they are still doing slavery and they are still causing pain and ignorance in the world. And so greed and ignorance, all of these things, and having the illusion that it's okay, living in an illusion, and saying, I am superior, I am worthy, they are animals. I'm okay. It's okay, they're animals, I can do it, uh, it's okay. But in somewhere in the back there is the one saying it's okay, but the heart tells you that it's not so. So I'm here to release you all, all of those who think they are superior, and I'm here from the center of the Godhead to say, it is not for you to harm a single hair on any creation made by the Creator. And oh, will you understand that it is not too late to wake up. This is your wake up call. And this is a time for you. I'm going to ring this bell here. To wake up. Time for the wake up for humanity. To wake up to the richness and the beauty of all skin colors. Their, their color is for a purpose and a reason. It's not just put on us by some mistake. You know, the color of a rose is not created by just some mistake or some mixture of ingredients. And yes, you could do hybriding, but it's never the same. The roses that they hybrid right now have no smell. So they haven't got it right yet. And I want to thank all the artists in the world. If you look at the, the art and the beauty of humanity, and they paint in the colors of the roses and the pinks and the reds and the blues. And I've had myself painted by some of the most amazing artists, and I have to say, they are seeing the beauty of creation. So I invite those who are waking up or who choose to wake up to understand the simplicity of their minds and it is time to expand open 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 and then i want to look on the other side of the the pole 
to those who were cast into slavery. And I do know that each of us individually is creating our own world. And so I cannot look at everything and every single person as a blanket of slavery, but each individual working. And so we look at that as coming from the lowest denominator of humanity and rising upward. And that is the struggle for those who uh, today, on uh, this Juneteen day of June 2020, June 19, and the emancipation of slavery, but still it didn't, you know, it was on a piece of paper and still the struggle. And so what I got in my research is there's an encodex that is within the genome. And it looks like a black box. It looks like your television where you could be programmed. And the programming within the DNA is so deep and embedded that they are not enough, that we are not enough, that this skin color is not enough, that it is lowly and is, but I know the richness because my Egyptian background, our civilization went for more than 3,000 years. And believe me, it's beyond what is written in the Bible. And some of the places in the homeland of where I've walked is over 10,000 years old. So I want to say that in my life, I would never got the encodex that, that we weren't enough. And I want to say it's really in breaking the encodex of the black box, that imprint, that, that um, one has to walk with that ability. And I think in Tucson or Tungsten, the Oklahoma town that was burned to the ground by ignorance, European-American ignorance, um, once again, denoting the insuperiority of a race that has to go so far as to exterminate in order to feel that they are superior. Uh, there is a true need for them to wake up. The terrible thing about it is that they've embedded themselves in all the jurisdictions of judging and, and police and all the higher towns. So, they're not reliable people to place your life, your, your life blood your, into the hands of someone who is of a lesser consciousness. And, and racism is only a state of consciousness. And you have one grouping living in illusion and the other group living in an illusion, but one is uh, inferior and one is superior. So it's the same thing. And here we are in the middle, totally awake, conscious of both, but I step forward and out of that racial, and I understand it, but that is not who I am because you raise upward towards nationality, globalism, and then galactic consciousness. Coming from the Godhead, you understand that we are in the bigger cosmos of things. And the goodness for that is that I'm awakened. I have been enlightened in the world and I understand it and I have great compassion and I love each family and certainly do not want another to be harmed because I've lived in enough suffering myself. I know what it is. And I married into a family that was racially mixed, but they were from the South. They were black and they had the hard times and I went to places where they didn't serve me. I know all about that ridiculous state of being. And I pray for it to be awakened as it is tonight. I see the thousands and thousands around the world that are protesting and saying, reform, reform, reform. And so I support that in a peaceful way. And I ask in the highest light for the illuminated ones to lift the veil of ignorance upon this earth, to stand down the iconic mischievous ones who give people the power to harm another, to show them the ignorance that they are trusting in the lies that are before them. Let each human being know that we are one species. We are consciously 
an elevated intelligence in a human body having a human experience. May you understand that. You have a spirit and a soul. You have a purpose and a quality. And so I'm going to call forth each one who is ready to stand as the head of your lineage to make a moment within your life to call in that heavenly divine part of yourself and recognize you can hereby make a decision to end the ignorance in your life. And you look down 2,000 years down the channel of the European American, the simpleness, knowing that the grandfather probably just came from Europe, somewhere off the boat, almost all of, all of the Americans, except for the Native Americans, just got off the boat 200 years ago, at least. And that, I could tell you, 90% of them were just the common person. There was nothing superior about them. The same in Germany, where this whole thing took place of we are a superior race, we are the Aryans. Aryans, we started the Nazi party, whatever. I understand that Europe was living through an ice age. I know this because my relatives left Egypt during the, 19, the 1790s because of Napoleon and his cannons, and they didn't understand that, but understand that Europe was going through an ice age. The snow never fell to the ground. The food was destroyed on the top of the earth, and the French did not eat potatoes or carrots or roots. The Irish were starving because they planted the wrong potatoes. And all the way down to Italy, it was frozen. And so those up in the Slavic countries and Croatia and all the places that were just starving because of this ice age, Russia, all of these places, my gosh, I understand. They had to make a decision of survival. They were stacking up bodies everywhere. They had just come out of the plagues not too much time before that. So what did they see? They saw the different races and they had to make a decision. And so they made up an excuse to take, kill, maim, destroy millions and millions of people so that they would survive. That is the truth. And so if you can live with that and say, I am superior, then I would say, blessings to you. But in truth, the barbaric cruelty that was placed upon the people were written is written in the Book of Life and your lineage. It is up to you to make the decisions and I call you on that to make the decision to take a stand and release 2,000 years of slavery, superiority, degradation, genocide of people, slaughtering, controlling, manipulating, because it is not humane. It is not true. And you're living in a lie. Your ignorance is dangerous and it is needing to resolve itself. Even in yourself, you understand that. And on the other side of those trying to achieve on the backs of others, the gangs trying to sell drugs and make money, but not taking care of the neighborhood, not taking care of the single mothers with their babies because the power of the drugs to evolve into illusion of who you are, that degradation of humanity that you've taken on as your responsibility, 
Looking down that timeline, you can release it. You can re release the farm workers and the slavers and the being enslaved and being controlled and manipulated. And, and it's no. We can say no. No more. You are the head of the lineage. You are responsible for your life, for your mental health. And you are the head of the family. And you can begin again in this moment. And I will be your witness. That is your freedom today. It is not a piece of paper, 1965. It is you today taking a breath. And I decree for my family from this day forward, we are free. We are free of these notions and this illusion that's going on, this black box of programming that's been crammed down our throats and placed on the black box of our televisions. We do not accept any of those. I am breathing human, creative, beautiful, awesome, being and the color of my skin is what I'm supposed to have because I hold the key to the universe within myself. I want to be your witness. I want to hear those decrees. I give everyone an opportunity to sit quietly and look at what you would need to resolve. We look at the Jewish, the Judeans, who have moved back into the Palestine. Do you think that the Creator is not aware of the superiority at attitude and, and your downplaying of humanity in Palestine? Do you think that the Creator is not aware in the coast, in the Gulf of Aden and, and all through that Middle Eastern, Syrian and uh, the Caliphs and all of these people, all of you, who may think that you are causing, think that you're causing change and that you are the proper one. Take a breath in realizing if you are doing any harm in any way to another human, that it is not proper. This grandmother, she's coming out to say it. Harm, do no harm. That is the key. So we're moving to a place of um, the veil dropping and there will be some changes happening because there's a higher intelligence in town and they've always been here. And some of you call them ETs, ultra-terrestrials, whatever you may say, they're here. And as they show themselves, we as humans must come together. This is the turning point and I'm putting it on the table. And now is the time to step in to the lineage of who you are, dissolve the differences, open the field and be human and join the central common race of humanity. This is the time. Here's your wake up call. It's so important that each of you understand that you are the beauty and the grace of the one. I'm going to look now to see if I have said all that I need to say. The rising of the consciousness. I want to talk a little bit about the police and, and know that my husband was high security. And I, I understand running into the buildings and going in places where it's very dangerous. And I think as humanity begins to recognize their own humanness and they crack the heart open as we see these executions by these men. And my husband, he said, you know, it's very interesting. The soldiers coming back from Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan, they love to kill. I thought that was very interesting. He said it worried him because when he did Vietnam and he did Korea and he guarded presidents and this and that, they were doing it for America. They were doing it to protect the country. But these soldiers, these people coming back, they actually enjoy killing. And that really worried him. And so I want us to become aware as you're reorganizing yourself that there are groupings that really are asleep and they feel that it's okay to do damage. And they're either working from another entity, talking into, you know, like 
Let's be real. In mental health, there are different personalities. There, and you can call them archetypes or whatever you want, but I deal with them all the time. So I know they exist. And some people are working with entities or beings or parts of themselves that are fractionated. And how can you tell? Because the heart and the head are not together. They cannot feel you. We call them psychotic. But it may just be that they're possessed in some way. And I'm going to put that on the table. Uh, the illusion is there. Because when the true person steps forward, they are filled with love and they feel and they cry and we have emotional and we touch each other and that is the humanness. That is the true self. And so we're dealing with how to manage those who are broken and fractionated that have gotten jobs in security to protect us. That's the key. And I'm glad that uh, there is a new level of you know, mental health that's going to be evaluating our police officers. Um, I want to give those that are uh, true, you know, frontliners, they're out in the front lines making sure that the world is safe. I want to give them, you know, complete support and I understand their position. But I do know that the very few that have had nowhere else to go, no play, another way to get a job, is to join the police force or join the military. And that military follow mind and they just do, do, do. And if they say kill, 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 they kill, kill, kill. Take a breath on that one. What an illusion that has to be dissolved. And we can do it. The time is now. It's ripe. We're all ripe. And as the cosmic energies are upon us, shifting the DNA that we have, we can make the change that is necessary to evolve our consciousness. So racism is just a level of consciousness and the evolution may be painful and the cracking open of the world heart is beautiful and I'm here to support you all. This is Celestine Aisha Star. In the highest light of the one, I love you and I believe in each and every one of you to come and stand at the head of your lineage. Let go of the past. Plant a flower as a memorial in the earth and let it go. Step forward and recognize that your mind and your heart manifest the future. What is it that you decree for your family and your lineage and the generations to come? You are the change you've been waiting for. I'm here to tell you, it is time. Blessings on high.